Java 9 introduces modularity to our application to enforce strong encapsulation when sharing public APIs between packages. This video is going to transform an application written in Java 8 to then use the modularity from Java 9 to make specific packages available to specific modules and to then enforce this strong encapsulation. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more weekly videos on Java, please subscribe to the channel. So if we take a look at the application that we'll be transforming, it's currently written using just simple Java 8, and it has three main packages. So we have this UI package, which has a single class called the GUI service, and the GUI service will be interacting with the user, and it will be taking the user's requests and using this shop service to then process those requests. The shop service class belongs in the service package, and it also has this service util class within a sub package called utility. So if we look at the shop service class, it accepts any of the user's requests, for example, with this public method called get all shop items. Then it might validate the request and it might transform the request. And then it will then interact with the MySQL manager class, which belongs in the repository package to then persist or work with the database for that user request. We can see here that it's using service util field to items to transform that request. And then it's passed on into the MySQL manager. And this would typically be connecting with any of our databases and then working with our database to persist or get different items. So we have three key layers, the UI package, the service package, and the repository package. So let's have a look at how these three packages work with each other and how we can transform them with Java 9. So at the top we have the GUI package which contains all the endpoints that our user will interact with. In the middle we have the service package which contains the process package and the utility package. And then at the bottom we have the repository package which is then interacted by the service package to then store any requests with the database. Now these packages work really nicely because the GUI package will have access to the process package and then the process package will have access to the repository package and because all the methods are public they can be easily accessed between different packages. Now the problem we have is that the process package and the utility package APIs can also be accessed from the repository package. The same applies for the process package and the utility package as they can access any of the classes and any of the public methods within our GUI package. So this is where Java 9 and modules come into play because it helps us to strongly encapsulate our packages to control which packages can have access to the certain public APIs that we have within each module to provide greater control within our application. So when we begin using Java 9, we're going to specify individual modules. We're going to have the GUI module, the service module, and the repository module. And each of these modules will contain the appropriate package. So we have the GUI package within the GUI module, these two packages within the service module, and then the repository package within the repository module. Each module will contain a new file called module-info.java, and we'll look at how we can create that and it will specify exactly which packages within the module that can be accessed by other modules. So within our service module, we're going to say that the process package is exported using the exports keyword. And then within the repository module, we're going to say the repository package is exported. This means that other modules can now access these exported packages and have access to those APIs. So our GUI module will require this process package from the service module, and our service module will require this repository package from the repository module. We can then specify within each of our modules what other modules are required for that module. So within our GUI package, we will say that it requires the service module, and within the service module, we will export only the process package Therefore, the GUI module will only have access to the process package. We will then say the service module requires the repository module and the repository module will be exporting the repository package. So therefore, the service module will now have access to this package. So let's look at how we can implement this within Java 9. So the first action I'm going to do is create these new modules and I can do that by right clicking on our project name, hitting new and then module.
So we can see all of the modules on the left hand side, they have their own source folder. And now I'm going to drag each of these packages into the correct module that they actually belong in. We've now moved all of our classes into the respective modules. So now if we open them, we may see some compile errors because the services that they're requiring, so for example with the GUI service, it no longer has access to the package for the shop service. So what we now need to do is firstly tell our service module that we would like to export the shop service. And then we need to tell the UI module that we would require the shop service. And we're able to do this through the module info.java file that we create within each module. So first we want to right click on the source file, we go to new, and then we can select module-info.java. So we can see that our module is called service module. And firstly, what we would like to do is export our service.process package. So that way our shop service class can now be accessed by other modules. I'm now going to go into the UI module and create the same module info file. However, this time we're going to say that we require the service process package from the service module. I need to add the dependency of the service module into the class path whenever I'm requiring a new module. And now if I head into the GUI service, I can now import the shop service into this module. And now our GUI service has direct access to the shop service. We still have a problem within our shop service and that's because it requires the MySQL manager. So have a think about how we might go about doing this and just pause the video for a second. So the first step in making the MySQL manager class available to the shop service would be to export it from our repository module. So we'll select the source folder from our repository module, hit new and then module info. We will then export the package off repository, which is where the MySQL manager exists. And then we'll head into the service module, module info file, and we will say that it requires the repository module. Now if you head back into the shop service, we can import this class. And just like before, we've transformed our application from a single module to now having multiple modules. One last item that I just want to touch on is within the GUI service. So our GUI service doesn't actually require any access to the repository module, but I am actually able to access that repository module. If I do private, my SQL manager, and then require the module from the module info file. My GUI service within the UI module is now able to access the My SQL manager class from the repository module. And this is actually a problem. But thankfully, within our modular design, we're actually able to specify which exact modules can have access to which exact packages. So if I go back into the repository module, module info file, we can say what packages we would like to export, but we can also specify which modules we're exporting them to. So I can say to, and then service module. And now this repository package is only available to our service module. So now if I head back into the UI module and look at the GUI class, we can see that we can no longer import the MySQL manager. And that's because within the repository module, we're only exporting the repository package to our service module. So that summarizes some key points from modularity that is introduced with Java 9 and how you can go about implementing it through the module info file for different modules of an application. We've looked at how we can export a package and specifically to which other modules and how a module can require certain packages from other modules.